In this video, I'm going to go over a security vulnerability that can occur when you use realloc in C. So when you use realloc to dynamically allocate a greater amount of memory for something that you've got on the heap already, what can happen is it can actually copy that data to an entirely new place in memory where there is more space available. And if that happens, the original location of memory that was being used to store this data, it will actually still contain the old data, leaving it on the heap for other things to potentially access and see, which is actually a potential security vulnerability if you have sensitive data on the heap. So let's go over an example of it. And I've got a, I've got a visualization of what's going to happen here that we'll go over, but I want to go over it step by step in terms of what's going on and what we got to worry about here. So because we're going to use uh, malloc and calloc, I'm going to include the standard library, so stdlib.h, and then I'm also going to include string.h because I'm going to copy some strings on the heap as well. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to allocate space for two passwords on the heap. So I'm going to have a character pointer to password one and a character pointer to password two. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to allocate space for two passwords. So I'm going to say password one is equal to malloc, and I'm going to say seven times the size of car. So we've got space for seven characters. So including the null terminator, it's going to be space for a six character password. And I'll do the same thing for password two, allocating, uh, you know, space for seven characters on the heap there. And then what I'm going to say is I'm going to string copy into password one, a password, and it's going to be the ultra secure ABC one, two, three. Then I'm going to string copy into password two, the again, ultra secure password XYZ789. And so now I've got two six character passwords stored on the heap. Now what happens when I use malloc to allocate space like this is that it'll allocate password one on the heap in a certain location of memory. And then because I'm kind of just starting up my program here and I've only allocated two things so far, password two is going to be allocated contiguously in memory. In other words, it's going to be allocated right after password one. So right after where password one is stored in memory. And that's what we're kind of visualizing here is that we allocate space for password one. We copy ABC one, two, three into it. We allocate space for password two and we out and we, we copy XYZ seven, eight, nine into it, but in memory, they're next to each other. So if you think of memory as like a series of slots for storing data, and this is like a numbering system from zero, one, two, three, you know, up to nine, eight, B, A, B, C there. Password two is stored right next to password one in memory. So they're stored right next to each other. And we can actually print out some data to just confirm that this is what's happening here. So if I say here, print F and I say P one address, and we'll use percent P to print out the, the pointer percent P and then we'll say slash N and we'll say P two address. And let's just look at the addresses we get here. So I'm going to print out the, the pointer, the, the password one address and the password two address here. So password one, password two, and we'll try printing them out. I'll say GCC dash O demo demo dot C to compile it. And oh, I didn't spell printf right. So I should spell printf right. We'll clear this. We'll try it again. And what do I do? Oh, I, I have password one and then password two there. All right, clear it, try it again. Okay, and you see that we have the P1 address and the P2 address. And if you look at these addresses, these are effectively a large number. If you look at these addresses, you can see they look pretty similar, right? Like this address here, it's almost the same as the, the other one up until a point where it's a bit different. So you can tell that they're, they're close in memory. We could actually print out the integer representation of each of these addresses as well. And that can also illustrate what I mean, which is that these things are basically right next to each other in memory. So I'll print out the, the pointer one address or the, the password one address again, this time as an integer, same thing with address two for the, the, the password two address. I'm going to print that out as an integer as well. And I'll just say here int and I'll say password one, and then I'm going to say int and do a conversion to an integer of password two. And what I'm doing here is I'm basically taking the memory address, converting it to an integer because it, it effectively is a number in some sense. And I'm just going to print out those now. So printing, printing out the addresses as integers now. And if I do this here, then what we're going to find is that they're actually very, very close in memory. So we'll, we'll compile it again, run it again. And we, we see that they're very close in memory. Like they're 
the data is is separated by like you know 16 numbers here essentially right and you can tell they're very close in memory and if we did a printf actually starting from password one we could actually just kind of keep printing beyond the boundary of password one and we'd end up printing out password two as well because they're located right next to each other in memory like this. So we can actually do that. Let's make a loop that's going to print out password one and password two. We're going to say four int i is equal to zero. i is less than, we'll just make a big number like 100. And then we'll say i plus plus. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to print out the character located in memory at password one i. And what this is going to do, and I'll just print a new line at the end there just to clean it up a bit. What this is going to do is starting at password one, starting at that memory address, because remember, it's it's ultimately, the pointer is ultimately a memory address, like this memory address pointing to this thing in memory. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to loop and keep indexing that memory address, treating it like an array, and it's going to keep on reading and outputting the, the character located at each location and memory there and it's going to go all the way up to 100 so it's going to actually print out like a number of characters potentially and it's going to try to print out essentially everything from the location that password one is stored at onwards up to 100 places and so we'll, we'll print it out and just see what happens here so again we recompile we print it out and you'll see that we get abc123 xyz789 so like they are right next to each other in memory. Password two is located right after password one in memory. Now, where this could become an issue is let's say that I change the size of password one. The size of password one needs to be changed. Maybe the user picked a longer password or whatever it is. And we have to then reallocate the space for password one. So if realloc has enough space next to the currently allocated thing, then what it'll do is it'll just allocate the space that is next to that currently allocated thing. So if we didn't have password two here, like if we didn't have password two, it wasn't stored in memory here and there's nothing here. This is, this is free memory that could be allocated. If I call realloc and I say, I just need a couple more spaces in memory. Like I just need to be slightly bigger. What it'll happen is, what'll happen is it'll just enlarge the existing space where password one is stored and it'll just allocate extra space. So now you can fit in like maybe the password gets extended to be like X, Y, Z, you know, uh, seven, eight, nine or something like this. And the password gets extended, you know, the, the longer password is then stored in this, this place in memory, which has been made larger by realloc. But if we don't have that, if we have it so that I want to do a realloc of some allocated memory, and there is not enough space next to the currently allocated memory location because it's maybe occupied by something else. Then what realloc is going to do is it's going to take the data here. It's going to copy it to another place in memory entirely where it does have enough space to fit the new size that's been requested. And when it does that, the danger is, is that it's going to leave what's in memory currently at that location. So let's, let's go over this to see what we mean here. So what we're going to say here is we're going to say, okay, password one, let's reallocate memory for password one. We're going to say password one is equal to reallocate space for password one. And we're going to now allocate space for 20 characters. So we're going to say 20 times size of car. So it's now much bigger. And what's happening here is realloc, when it goes to reallocate space for password one, it's gonna find that it can't fit it in here. Like it can't just sort of fit it into the existing spot that the password space has been allocated for without running into this space that's already been taken up by password two. So what it's gonna do is it's gonna reallocate a new, it's gonna reallocate this data to a, to a new uh, location in memory entirely. It's gonna find a new location in memory where there is 20 characters of space and it's gonna copy that data there. So if we did now like a printf of password one, so if we said like printf password one, we're gonna find that the same password is still stored at password one. So I'm gonna say printf percent s slash n slash n, let's print out password one. And we're gonna find if we output this, 
that at password one, we still have stored ABC123. So that part is all good. But the issue here is that it's actually now located at a different position in memory. It's actually now found at a different uh, place in memory now. So what we'll do here is we'll actually print out the address for P1 and P2 again. I'm gonna copy this code here and I'll put a new line here, an extra new line here just to separate things a bit more here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna print out, before I print out password one, I'm gonna print out the address of password one and password two again to see how those addresses have changed after we reallocate space for password one. So let's print them out again. Let's run this here, we print them out again, and you'll see this here. So the, the numbers will change each time depending on when you run the program, potentially. But this, this P1 address here, you see it's this number here, the 7FF2BBC059F0, or an integer format, it looks like this, with like 219678 as the ending. And, and you'll see that after we, do, after we do a realloc of password one, it's not like password two address is gonna change, right? The password two address is the same before and after we do reallocation, that hasn't changed. But notice that password one address has changed. So password one address is different after reallocation. And what's happened there is what I've said, is that it has taken this data and it has placed it in a new space in memory where there is room to store 20 characters contiguously, in other words, like in a row, one after the other. And so what we can do now is we can actually check to see what is in the original password one memory address. So we're gonna check to see what's in that original memory address. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna make another pointer here, we'll call it car star other pointer. And what we're gonna do is before we reallocate space for password one, which causes password one to have a new memory address because a new memory, realloc returns a new memory address to that new spot in memory. What we're gonna do is we're gonna store the old memory address of password one. We're gonna store the old memory address where password one was, was, was storing its password. So we're gonna say here, other pointer is equal to password one. And we're basically gonna hang on now to this memory address. We're gonna keep it. We're gonna keep that memory address. And let's see, just to, just to make sure, let's just make sure that we actually got that, that same address there. So we'll just print it out as well. We're gonna say here, print F, and now let's print out that other pointer. So we're gonna say other pointer address, percent D slash N, and we'll print out that other address just to confirm that it is the same as pointer, as, as password one's original address. And so we'll, we'll run this here. And you see that, you know, password one was originally stored at this address in memory. After the reallocation, it's now stored at this address in memory. So it was here, now it's stored here. And other pointer, what we've done is we've actually saved the original location in memory where password one was stored. We've saved that original location. And we can actually still access it and the string is still stored there. So this string is still there. Realloc didn't clear the space. So if we say like printf, and I say here, other pointer string, and we print out that string, we'll find that it's actually still there. I can just say like print out other pointer. And even though the, the space has been, you know, reallocated, the, the original string is still there. ABC123, it's still stored at that location in memory. Um, and this would be a problem if we had uh, sensitive data because then we would have this sensitive data in a place in memory that we no longer even have control over really. We don't really, we don't even really have, uh, our program doesn't even really have control over the space in memory and we have sensitive data there, which would be a problem if you did something like a memory dump of your program or some like, you know, nefarious malicious, you know, uh, program or, or actor did that. And just so you know, what's happening here actually is that because we're doing a, a realloc here, so because we're doing a realloc and you know, there's not enough space next to um, you know, password one where it is now, what ends up happening is it ends up putting it over here. It ends up putting it in like the next available space. So password one is gonna be basically reallocated 
such that it's going to be over here now. And you'll have like password one and you can have like E, B, C and on and on. And you'd have like more memory addresses and on and on. So password one ends up right after password two, because that's kind of like the next available block in memory where there is space to hold 20 characters. And what we've done is we've actually changed this so that now like, you know, other pointer is now a, a pointer that's referring to this memory address here. So we can just still see what's in here. So what we could actually do is if I actually did a printf with other pointer and, and printed out, you know, a hundred characters again from the, the point of other pointer, we're going to find that the, that the, the password is in there both times. Uh, because it's in both of those locations, the sort of before location where it was originally and the after location where realloc copied it. So we'll print F. What we're going to do is we're going to do a print F of every character starting at the other pointer location in memory where password one was stored originally. And we're going to print out every character we can find there from like position zero to position 100 just to see what we find there. And what we're going to find is it'll print out this and then it'll print out the, the old thing that was stored there that we don't even have control over anymore. Then it'll print out password two, then it'll print out password one. So let's just run it just to see and confirm that. So we run this here and now we get ABC one, two, three. That's the old password that we don't even have control over anymore. It's the old data in memory. And then we have XYZ seven, eight, nine, and that's password two. And then we have ABC123. That's the reallocated space for password one. It was kind of like the next available place in memory. So that's where it was reallocated. And we have ABC123. And the problem with, with realloc here is that it did a realloc and it found another place in memory where it did have enough space. And it copied the old thing, the old data, into that new place in memory. So we can then start using this space in memory and copying in larger passwords and we're all happy. But the problem is, is that we now have that old data that's still in memory. That old data is still there in memory. And not only that, but it's no longer space that is actually allocated. It's no longer space that we actually have control over in our program. And so if there was sensitive data there, it would be potentially available for being found or used in a way that we don't want it to because it's sensitive data. So this is something we have to be aware of when we use realloc, that it's not going to clear out the old memory we were using, and we want to be careful about having any sensitive data there. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.